Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the skipper's here, and I'd like to ask Dan Duquette to join us on stage for a little Q&A with the fans. Dan, if you could. I was a little worried because uh, Rick Dempsey gave Dan and I the same tie, and several times we've showed up at the event wearing the same tie, so I'm glad to see at least today we're different. You're good today. Yeah. <laughs> orange shirt, orange tie worked out well. Well, first of all, Buck, welcome home. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we've been on a uh, about a two-and-a-half-month road trip. That's what it seems like. You know, we got home and uh, played a... Three o'clock game, night game, back uh, on the road again. So I think everybody's really excited to be back. And I would like to say a special thank you to the players for their attendance and the coaching staff and everybody. These guys got to bed about. <laughs> These guys got to bed about four o'clock this morning. Uh, you know they changed the game. I think you play a little better. You get a chance to play on Sunday night. We won't talk about the game, but. <laughs> uh, it's one of the byproducts of uh, playing better baseball, but thank you to the players and the wives that came today and the coaching staff because, believe me, they're not operating on a whole lot of sleep right now. Very deserved off day. Let's hear for them. Dan, can you talk a little bit about how everything came together last year? You, you, you and Buck worked so well together, all the moves, 52 different players coming through Baltimore to contribute to a playoff team. and. How, how the vision and, and the execution on the field with the staff all came together? Well, I think the guys did a great job. We had a core group of players that returned here last year, and then we went out and we got some pitching and some depth. And under Buck's leadership and the work ethic of the players, which I thought was exemplified in all those one-run games and extra inning games, it really gave us an identity as a team. I mean, these guys would come to the ballpark, and they didn't care how long they had to stay to work to get the job done. And then with some of the guys we brought up, younger guys, uh, Nate McLeod and Manny Machado, that really energized the team, and we ended up having a good year. Which, and we really appreciate the support you guys gave us in the community. Coming out and supporting us during the playoffs and that game with uh, Ripken where we honored him, that was just a terrific day uh, for Oriole baseball, and that's when I knew we had, you know, the makings of a really good year that day. Buck, when you look back on last year, and Dan brought it up, all those close games, when you play in those games day in and day out, you, you come to expect to figure out a way to get it done, don't you? Um, not really. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, You'd you rather know, win 9-2? to two? You know, last year was last year. You know, a W is a W, is an L is an L, but whether it's one run or whether it's five runs, you know, we're hoping to win some of those games by two runs, mm -hmm. figure out a way. And, you know, we don't live in a world where this happened and this stat says this, so this is what's going to happen. That's why we play the games. It's human beings. It's, uh, it's not played on paper. You know, if you look, David Price pitching opening day in Tampa, we've never hit a home run off of him. The game's over, and we beat Price, and we hit a home run off of him. So why do people come to the games? Because of the unknown. And um, the good thing about this group is our curiosity will be satisfied at 162 games. And uh, I just know that we will be as good as we're capable of being, and, and that allows me to, to sleep well sometimes because, you know, I, I, I trust the people we have. And just get out of the way and try not to get in their way of doing what they do. What is it about this group that you like? Uh, I like their wives a lot. We got a great group of wives. <laughs> really, you know, out of all the years that I've been fortunate enough to do this, this is probably the best group of uh, wives, fiancés, close girlfriends, and I mean that. It's solid, which tells you about their evaluation skills. Good people, uh, good, good. Uh, you know, you can tell their moms and dads have been uh, involved in their lives, and I mean that. And uh, I think they care about each other. They care about. Uh, doing the right things for, and I tell you what, they, they like Baltimore. They really do, and I think the uh, personality of this club fits our city, and, uh, and um, we'll see where it takes us. Dan, another thing that, that has really turned around since you've come on and joined Buck 
is the depth in the organization. And, and they're really, uh, Buck uses the word opportunity quite a bit, and we certainly saw that last year, where there are guys playing at Norfolk and even Bowie that know they're a phone call away possibly from coming up and helping here. And the, as the, the, the GM, uh, the executive vice president, that has to be exciting for you that not only do you have options, you have options at several levels. Well, I, I think Girl used to say it well, we need to have deep depth, right? And that means having, you know, a good pitching staff and available players at AAA, and then having a good farm system so that when the guys are ready, you can bring them up and they can help the team. I've said all along, our best players, I believe, will come through our farm system. And we have a great opportunity here where they can, fans can see them in Bowie and Frederick and Aberdeen. They're just uh, a close drive away. And I think it's great for our players, too, because they get a chance to see the culture of the Major League team and the culture of the city. So I think that's a great asset we have here in Baltimore. And we're going to do everything we can to leverage that by having a good player development operation so that uh, you know, we can help the team. Buck, who did you talk to more last year, Dan or Ron Johnson, the AAA manager, with all the movement that you had to go through last season? Well, you know, that was because of, of injury. You know, the last thing any of these 25 guys want to hear is about somebody getting ready to take their job. I mean, believe me, I'm hoping we stay with these same guys, and that's the plan. But, you know, the, the good Lord didn't intend you to put your arm over your head and jerk it down violently every fifth day a hundred times. I mean, that's why we walk around with our arms down here, and, and the softball people don't have a problem. So you have to be ready for the what-ifs. You do. And... Um, I don't want to replace any of these guys. You know, we're hoping to get Brian Roberts and Wilson Bedman back soon, Steve Johnson. Uh, Wada's close to being available to us. But I hope they can't take anybody's job. You know, that's the way I look at it. There's somebody that can do what I do, can do what Dan does, do what you do. There's, so you, you, know, you keep grinding, and you bring what you bring, and that's what these guys do. So, um, now we had Ron on speed dial, but we had it on there because of the wrong, because someone got hurt. And we hope that doesn't happen, and we hope that everybody performs like they're capable of because that would bode well for us. What was it like for you two gentlemen last year, the two home playoff games, the, the way the fans came out and, and supported the team and the electric atmosphere that was in the stadium those two nights? Even with the rain delays, the, the fans didn't care. Postseason baseball was back, and they enjoyed it. What was it like for you guys? Well, I, I, I want to tell a quick story. We had the rain delay for the first playoff game. And the fans were out there waiting for the rain, and it was cold, and it was miserable. But it was our first playoff game in a long time. And some of the players that were new to Baltimore, they said, you think the fans are still there? And Jimmy Johnson said, hell yes, they are. Because <laughs> they were there to see a playoff game. And that's really, to me, what the playoffs are about, having a home playoff game, and being able to go out and cheer for your team. And, you know, that was really... Uh, a terrific accomplishment by the team to get to the playoffs, but it was really about the leadership that they developed within the team and guys like uh, Jimmy Johnson going out and having a great year. Adam Jones and J.J. Hardy picking up more balls at their position and playing more innings than any other player at their position. Um, Matt Wieters uh, anchoring the team. Um, so, I mean, these guys really took control of their careers and they really took a big step in terms of foreign, their own identity within the team. And, uh, you know, I, I was just thrilled to be a part of that because any good team I've ever been on has good leadership within the team, and, and these guys really stepped up. You know, uh, I think probably the highlight, other than having the fans there, and I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a little cautious about spending so much time talking about last year. It was great. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But, you know, we have to earn the trust, not only one year, another year, another year, another year. The, the greatest organizations are people that consistently have some excellence. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to do it for one year. We're trying to do it. And I got to tell you, if you were in the locker room at the end of game five in Yankee Stadium last year, there was nobody happy in there. Nobody was satisfied. There was frustration because we had a chance to roll the dice, and uh, we were a foul pole away from it. The ball did hit the foul pole, by God. And... Uh, <laughs> That's another reason for replay. Uh, probably one of the highlights was Doug DeWinnis, uh, one of our, uh, uh, was running the rain room at the time, one of our executive vice presidents in charge of business operations, one of our great additions here that Mr. Angelos brought in, was down in the rain room, and uh, yeah, I'll name it, you know, 
Joe Torrey was doing a lot of stuff about the rain and when we were going to start and whatever. And somehow he, he turned to Girardi and said, uh, uh, how much time does CC need to get ready? He needs about 20, if I remember right, 15 minutes. Never expressed how much time our pitcher. And Doug goes, well, how much time do you think Chin Chin needs to get ready for the game? You know, it's the Yankees, you know. And I think that was, to me, was... You know, we're in this too. It's not just about, uh, we're trying to win this thing. We're not trying to just be competitive with the Yankees. And we got to quit putting so much importance on so relevant that the Yankees, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Red Sox. Well, how about the Orioles, by God? You know, let them think a little bit about us. So, I think that's what I took out of the playoffs. And um, I've turned the page on it, and it's time, and I know our players have. Well, there's a lot of excitement for this team this year. Uh, six and six, uh, off to a good start, and playing within the division and playing very well. So you, you talk about it's all about this year now, and so far so good. And then, you know, that tough road trip right out of the, the gate, you're home for three days after starting in Tampa. I mean, now you can get your feet down and, and settle into a routine. Well, I think it's such a game of routine, and uh, we're, we're excited. And I know this may sound like, geez, it doesn't take much to excite you guys, but we're going to play five seven o'clock games in a row. <laughs> That's exciting to get on the same clock, let these guys unpack. You know, they haven't been in their homes or with their families or unpacked their bags in over two and a half months just to get your feet on the ground and get into a routine. And that's one of the things that WBC took away from a lot of teams is that routine. Adam Jones had to, and Pedro Strope, they had to speed their clock up, Jonathan Scope, Chris Robinson, speed their clock up and start something at a time when it shouldn't be started. And now all of a sudden we had to slow the clock down and I'll get the clock going again because baseball players are creatures of habit. So I'm not a huge fan of the WBC. I'm, I'm about what's best for the Baltimore Orioles, and quite frankly, that wasn't good for the, for the, for the teams in general. All right, well, Buck and Dan, thank you so much for sharing some thoughts with us. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Buck Walter, Dan Duquette.